Give it to us good. Quack, quack. Thank you so much. I ran downstairs and I said, hello, sir. Can you please walk upstairs with me? Because I got to film a divorce video. He's like, divorce video? This is the divorce that I think about day and night. If the word divorce pops up in my head, this is the story that I'm thinking about. I think about this breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's the most unhinged case that we're ever going to discuss. And I feel like I've talked about it a little bit briefly before, but today is the deep dive. There is a talk show in Taiwan that's called called Kangxi Coming. Kangxi Laila, Kangxi Coming, yes. yes <laughs> Kangxi sure. Coming, okay? That's what it's called. And yeah, every country has like 5 million talk shows where celebrities come on there and talk about their new project. They give us a quirky, relatable, funny story about their personal lives where it's like, look, I'm just like you at home. Which by the way, I'm like a full-fledged slobber on the mouth sucker for these talk shows. I don't know why. I will watch the little snippets of these late night shows and have a little giggle gaggle but Kangxi coming is so much better. From what I hear, it is so much more intense. You know who's on there, right? Little S, duh, I know who's yeah. on there. Okay, so it's hosted by Little S and we talked about her older sister, Big S. You're like, who is that? Give me a refresher. Big S is a Taiwanese celebrity who gets married to this super rich guy. They have the world's messiest divorce second messiest divorce after this one. And they have a public fight about a half million dollar mattress. I didn't even know you could get a half million dollar mattress. Apparently Drake owns one. There's a company that just makes rich people mattresses. And then she went on to marry a Korean idol. I'm gonna link it below, but her little sister is called Little S. And she hosts this show that everyone freaking loves and loves her for it. She's really just, not afraid to ask celebrities intense questions. So other talk shows will be like, tell us, tell us about that funny little moment that you had at the grocery store because you grocery shop just like all of us. And little S will not do that. She'll be like, so why did you and your ex-girlfriend also a major celebrity breakup? I heard rumors on social media that you were cheating and you have a small weeby. Is that true or not? Yes or no? You cannot plead the fifth. She doesn't sugarcoat her questions like other talk show hosts. She has a tendency to put celebrities on the spot and get straight to the point. I imagine going on her show is a test of celebrities' media training. Usually, little S is the one doing the shocking with her blunt, rapid-fire list of questions. But there's one episode where little S gets up from her chair and starts running out of the studio. She's screaming. She's losing her goddamn mind. She's like a chicken with her head cut off. The episode is called Secrets in the Entertainment Industry. And in that episode, I guess little S was nudging her celebrity guest to tell her a big secret about someone in the industry. So the celebrity guest said, okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I can tell you one. It's about a huge A-list celebrity though, like triple A-list. Everyone is like, okay, spill the beans. Okay, fine. A respectable A-list celebrity is a big, big player at hotels. What does that mean? <laughs> Basically insinuating that this celebrity had multiple relations with multiple mistresses and or sex workers and is a frequent guest of a hotel. Keyword, mistresses. So is this respectable celebrity married? He went on to say that the celebrity would have numerous women, quote, serving him at the same time while he sits on a chair like a king on a throne. According, Who is this person talking? He's like an older celebrity. Uh -uh. Yeah. So according to him, this was further confirmed by hotel employees who witnessed a few of these dalliances. And little S, honestly, everybody on the set, producers, assistants, the intern that's just there to fetch coffee, their jaws are on the ground. This is the most crazy, salacious rumor that they've ever heard. What are you talking about? And most likely this guy is not lying about it because he's also a celebrity. The allegations are probably true, or at least he has good, good reason to believe that they are because if he's found out to be lying for attention or stretching the truth for attention, even if he doesn't name the celebrity, he could get canceled for being messy and try to take someone down for no reason. Little S starts freaking the fork out, begs him to write down the name of the celebrity and let her, just her. Nobody else will see it on set. Producers, nobody, just her. He's like, okay, I will, as long as you promise on national television that you will never tell another soul about this. She swears up and down on national television. He secretly, like pen and paper so close to his face, writes the name down, folds up the piece of paper, hands it to little S. She unfolds the paper on camera, but no camera has angled to that piece of paper. And she loses her mind when she reads the name on there. She falls out of her chair. She's running out of the studio. Everyone is curious. Who the hell is on that paper? 
Wang Sutong. <laughs> to know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It, I'm it's kidding. not Wang Sutong, guys. Sorry, yeah. don't sue us. Everyone is wanting to know, and little S swallows the paper, literally, what? so that nobody could you're dig through me. the trash for it. No, you're kidding. Yeah, she puts it in her mouth. She's like what? slobbering it up. Mm -hmm. What? And for years, nobody would know the identity of this nasty, naughty celebrity until a 5,000 word expose came out from a top tier A-list celebrity's own wife that alleged he was doing some of the most disgusting like rolling around on a New York City subway platform after it flooded and all you see is a thin layer of rat poop water, that level of heinous, disgusting, nasty acts. Like holy water needs to be injected directly into their home water pipes because of how sinful this man is. That's what she's saying. This is the level of expose we're talking about. We're not talking about, he like cheated on me and it was really sad. No, it's so much worse. And people start putting these two events together. So let's talk about one of the most scandalous divorces in all of Chinese history. That's super dramatic. But like to me, this is top five divorces in the history of my life that I know. It's just plot twist after plot twist. Also side note, this is one of those videos where I really advise you to watch till the end because the tides keep turning. So even if it sounds like I'm on one side during a part of this episode, it just means I'm trying to give you the full experience of how the netizens were feeling when it was unfolding because you're gonna think that you support one of them and then you're gonna be like, wait, I think I changed my mind. I'm so confused right now. It's just a lot going on. But first, do you wanna know how dumb I am? Everyone's like, we already know, but I guess you can further enlighten us. So Casey Fry sent me these phone cases. I don't know how many months ago they sent it to me. And for like a full week, I just left it on my kitchen counter because I was like, oh, cool. Another phone case. It's really cute. Do I want to like go and switch my phone case right now? Eh, I'll do it later. And I thought the only thing that was different about these phone cases is that I noticed that this camera has a higher ledge. You see that? And I was like, mm, that makes sense because your camera, you don't want it to scratch. And then my husband goes, did you know you could do this? It's a kickstand for your phone. It's a kickstand for your phone. Tell me why it took me a week to figure that out. And then the minute that I put this on my phone, I can never go back. I've been using this nonstop. So I'll be getting ready and I will kickstand this on my little bathroom counter. Watch makeup videos, watch makeup tutorials. You're like, I don't see a difference. That's very rude. I'm trying. Also, if I'm like FaceTiming, amazing. So if you don't have a Casetify impact ring case, which by the way, Casetify does not compromise on anything. So just because you're getting this extra feature does not mean that they took away anything. So basically the impact ring stand is a camera ring stand that protects your camera, but it also is convenient, but it's still got the same level of protection like the impact cases. So drop protection for 6.6 .6 feet, which is insane. You get all the cool designs and colorways. It's also made from 65% recycled and plant-based material. And it's just so cool. It solves my problems. And also it's like an amazing fidgeter. I'd be fidgeting. I'd be like, I'd be doing this all day. And, and it's just so well made. Like nothing about this feels flimsy. It's just a satisfying like that sounds so good. So make sure to click the link in the description or go to casetify.com slash bis to get a discount on your new favorite phone case. That's casetify.com slash bis to get a discount on your new favorite phone case. And thank you, Casetify, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into the divorce. Back to the crazy king on the throne, married celebrity lining these girls up like a train. The only clue netizens had is that this man is top tier respected wholesome celebrity with a clean image, which honestly, you would be surprised at how small of a pool of people that is. Like truly think about it. There's probably a handful of celebrities where you're like, I think that one's good. I think so. This one hasn't failed us yet. There's only a handful. So most people after this episode, they already have the person in mind. No way. Jay Chow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. Some people did think it was Jay Chow, but everyone was like, no, I think it's Wang Li Home. Seriously? Yes. Wow. But it wasn't like a witch hunt. Nobody was going and tweeting him or Weiboing him. They were just like, I feel like it's him because he fits everything. Mm -hmm. But there's no way he would do that to his wife. You know, it's just, it was one of those things. So Wang, we're going to call him Wang. He's got motivational speaker energy. I don't know how else to describe him, okay? When you look at him, you're like, that guy is gonna have a seminar. Encourage what? me to work hard and follow my dream. That's what he looks like. I don't know what it is. A lot of his songs are about uplifting other people too. So maybe I'm biased or this is like confirmation bias. This man is a legend. 
I don't know how else to say it. I should just put that straight forward right now. Don't come for me. This man is a legend in China. He's like up there with Jay Chow. Jay Chow is like the Beyonce of China. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. This is the level that we're talking about. And he's very interesting because a lot of his songs, well, he started with like R&B, romantic bops. And they were hits. People love him. He gets famous. And then he sprinkled in a couple of other songs like uplifting the youth. He just seemed like a good person. Every message of every song had a good meaning behind it. It's like chase your love, chase your dreams. Everything is a feel good. There's nothing that's like, oh man, life is depressing. What can we do about it? Did like there's none of that so kids love him because his songs are genuinely great and he also has like a really good image so he would come on these yeah he's tall he's got a good look and he's also fluent in english and chinese you know people were like damn this is husband material so kids the youth they're like this is my opa and then the parents of these kids would listen to the songs and they'd be like that's who you're being influenced by i love it keep listening to this man because this man is calling you the ancestor of a dragon and telling you to get up rise up and like follow your dreams we love this follow your dreams in your homework textbook bitch. the parents loved him everybody loved him he was just generally so well loved they actually called him a high quality idol that's what they called okay so this means they're not just entertaining they're not just talented they're not just a pretty face but they also have other aspects that chinese society typically deems as favorable such as the fact that wang was born and raised in the u.s So he knows Chinese fluently, but also he knows English fluently. He was accepted into Yale, Princeton, and Williams College. He ended up going to Williams College, and then he went on to get his master's at Berklee School of Music. His grandma graduated from Tsinghua University, which is the Harvard of China. His great-grandpa was a Chinese naval commander. His older brother went to Yale. His sister-in-law, Brown University. His younger brother, MIT. His younger sister-in-law, MIT. His uncle and cousin both went to Harvard. This guy's family pedigree is giving old money, high society chefs freaking kisses. In terms of how big he is... He sold over 60 million copies. He's a four-time winner and 19-time nominee of the Golden Melody Awards, which is like the Grammys of Chinese music. He easily sells out 90,000 seats for a concert and is one of the most followed celebrities in China. This is the elite. Top and wholesome image. Family-friendly. Parents love him. Kids love him. The government loves him. Wants to showcase his talent. And at this point in time, Wang is married to a half-Taiwanese, half-Japanese woman named Jing Lei. A lot of people actually respected him more for his marriage. Instead of marrying a young, hot celebrity. Which, side note, nothing's wrong with that. His wife is also very stunning and young and hot. But instead of just marrying another idol, which I guess people expected him to do, he chose to marry a Columbia University-educated graduate who's not a celebrity. I know. So they're like, oh my God. He's marrying a normie, a normal person. And she's so smart. He values intellectual conversations. That's what he's in this marriage for. And then he starts his family with her. So they have three kids, two daughters, and then a son. And by all accounts, this guy had his head screwed on right. And yet, here are people going, "Mm, do you think he's the guy in the letter from the show? Like, you think he's lining up his mistresses? Because that, I mean, there's no proof. There's no reason to theorize it's him. Everything is crickets until 2021. Wang's wife, Jing Lei, posts a long expose on Weibo, the Twitter of China, going in depth on all the horrors of her marriage. How this perfect man, Wang, had solicited sex work, cheated on her, had girls sending him new photos for his birthday congratulating him for another year on this planet he's just at his birthday dinner with his three young kids and nudes are popping up on his phone potentially he participated in celebrity gay bangs with other a-listers the list goes on for approximately six pages the details they read like a novel you really cannot make this shit up she describes seeing pictures of her husband the father of her three children licking another woman's lips on her face but still that's really bad and this is just the tip of the iceberg i'm gonna try and break down the news as easy to follow as possible it's a lot it's a lot buckle up there is a reason i think about this like at least once a week December 15th, 2021, news breaks that Wang and Jing Lei are getting a divorce. Now, it's a third party article, so neither the wife nor the husband have personally spoken up about it. I guess you could say it wasn't personally confirmed, 
But it's not leaked by a shady blind item or a tabloid. It seems pretty legit. It's like a major news source. Netizens are saddened and confused about this because Wang and his wife, all they really post about their personal lives is their family. Like it seems like they're really just focused on Wang's career and their family and they don't really do anything else. They don't really go party. They're not one of those celebrities. So what do you mean they're getting a divorce? Nobody saw it coming. It felt like their life was perfect. The news outlets started speculating that the couple tried to make it work, but there was drama between Jinglei, the wife, and Wang's mother. It's that classic mother-in-law and wife war that just, there was irreconcilable differences between wife and mom. And I guess in the Western world, we would actually shame the guy for it. We'd be like, hey, husband, what the fork are you doing not controlling your mom? You know what I mean? Like your mom should not be the third person in this marriage. That's unacceptable, right? But in the Eastern world, it was almost seen as this, oh, poor Wong. These two women just can't get their shit together because women are idiots. How sad must it have been for Wong to be in the middle of all of this? Really? Yeah, it was kind of like a, wow, you know, it's just really rough because from these speculation, Wong was almost the winning party of the divorce news. He was the Sophie Turner of the divorce, queen of the North. And instead of the conversation being speculations of, oh, I wonder what happened. Do you think that he did this or she did this? It was more so about You know, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationships, that's a soft spot for a lot of Chinese netizens. They probably have their own crazy stories and experiences that they could relate to. So Wang was almost forgotten. He's a forgotten party in this news. So while everybody is pouring out their hearts, sharing their two cents on the situation, Wang's agency comes out and is like, what are you guys talking about? They're not getting a divorce. That's fake news. What? So everyone's like, what? That doesn't make sense. 8 a.m., news breaks that the couple are getting a divorce. Four hours later, around noon, the agency comes out and says, just kidding, they're not getting a divorce. And then three hours later, Wong issues a statement himself stating, we are getting a divorce. (laughs) So if the news of their divorce wasn't really catching attention from netizens, it is now because the whole thing feels messy. It's like your agency and you aren't even on the same page. Like what's going on right now? Usually, couples are very organized with this. They have the black screen Instagrams with the white text that go up at the same time. Everything is coordinated. Every word in the divorce announcement is handpicked by both parties, like irreconcilable differences, differences in schedule. But right now, it feels like nobody's on the same page, which can only mean drama is happening behind the scenes. So everyone's like, let's just wait. Something is brewing. Anyway, Wang had a very PR friendly statement. He just said, my private life with Jing Lei is very simple and pure. So we will no longer respond to any media inquiries. There are many areas where I fell short in these years of marriage and I feel a lot of regret. We have different thoughts and plans for our future life. So we've decided to live separately. Although we're getting a divorce, we will forever be a family and we seek privacy and space from the outside world. So please refrain from disturbing our family. Thank you for your concern. Originally, people thought about this and they're like, okay, it's a boring response. It's very PR. But some very observant netizens started raising some questions. Why would he feel the need in his very first sentence of his statement, feel the need to mention that his marriage life is simple and pure? That's a very odd thing to say. A very odd choice of words to throw into a divorce post. Also, the part where he mentions that he fell short in these years of marriage and feels a lot of regret, it's almost like pre-apologizing for something. It's not even him saying, we weren't meshing. Our personalities are different. That's like, okay, both of us just couldn't make it work. Our schedules weren't meshing. It's like, okay, both of us couldn't make it work. To say that you have regrets and you failed in a lot of aspects, it sounds like you fucked up and you're trying to do damage control before something happens. It's weird. This felt like, you know, what's going on? That's what netizens are thinking. There's kind of this feeling of there's more than meets the eye with this statement. The day after the incident, December 16th, 2021, two bombshells are dropped on a tabloid website. Now, this one is a bit iffier than the news of their divorce because those were much bigger news outlets reporting that they're getting a divorce yesterday. These are just straight up tabloid websites. So it's unclear how accurate any of this is. But the rumor was Wong had multiple affairs during the marriage and one of them was with a member of this idol group called BY2. The tabloid stated a source close to the group had revealed all the salacious details. They said that Wong just wanted to have some naughty times with the idol. He engaged in sexual relations, but he explicitly told her that he doesn't want a romantic relationship. He just wants to to fuck. 
And then the other insane thing that it alleged was there was a video circulating, they claimed, and they show like a very (laughs) censored part where you don't even see anybody's faces, of Wong plus three super famous A-list celebrities having a full-on orgy. Well, can you tell it's him? No. The celebrities involved in the alleged orgy video responded by saying that these are false allegations, but even just their responses added fuel to this fire and now everyone really wants to know what the hell is going on and i will say it's quite impressive usually with news like this people lose their minds but a lot of people were still skeptical they're not going in guns a blazing they thought this is news from a tabloid website we don't know the truth yet let's just wait it out but i will say this tabloid release did increase the amount of attention that was coming on on their divorce now it's not even just young netizens but their parents everybody's tuning in to see if something's about to go down because it just sounds so crazy And lo and behold, Wong's agent does make a statement, which again, very PR friendly. And it just reads like these are private matters and anything defamatory, we're going to take legal action. But because they don't outright say those claims are baseless, they just say anything defamatory, we're going to take legal action. Yeah, anybody can say that. I could say that right now. Anything defamatory, I'm going to take legal action because that's against the law. But they're not putting those rumors down. They're not saying those exact rumors you're talking about are false and we're taking it very seriously. It was very vague and coupled with Wong's vague post about his marriage life being simple and pure and how he had messed up and made some regrets. It made people feel like, yeah, he could have totally cheated. And everyone's just waiting for someone, anyone to make a response. And now there's three parties involved in a divorce, which is never a good thing. We've got Wong, we've got his wife, Jinglei, but we also have the idol from the group BY2. Her name is Yumi, the alleged mistress. That same day, nobody makes a statement. It isn't until the next day, December 17th, 2021, all hell breaks loose. Jing Lei, the wife, posts a six page long expose on her Weibo. And I wish I could be like, let me sum it up for you guys. But every part of the six pages is absolutely bonkers. So I'm going to give it to you all. And we're just going to try to break it up into sections to make it more cohesive. Let's start with how they met. Oh, yeah. We're getting like a. So in 1995, I was born. One of those stories. That is a whole scandal of its own. Jinglei claimed that she was 16 years old when they met and Wong was 26 years old. She said that he was asking for her phone number, complimenting her looks. He wasn't interacting with her like you would imagine a 26-year-old should interact with a 16-year-old if you catch my drift. He kept engaging in flirtatious conversations. But she doesn't state that they dated immediately. But for years, they would kind of have this weird relationship where they would travel to the same cities when he was in town for concerts and they would go on these outings that could be considered dates. And this is all while she's underage, she claims. She claims that Wong would invite her to the movies. He would invite her to come over to his place at around 2 a.m. in the morning Which she's like, you know what? Now that I'm older, I see the red flags in that. But when I was 16, obviously I didn't see the red flags. She went to the movies with him once and she vividly remembers the most insane thing happening. They were in the first row of the theater watching the movie. After they finished the movie, he's like ducking and hiding. She finds out that his girlfriend at the time was in the same movie theater. What? Yes. But he convinces her that he would break up with the girlfriend and focus all of his attention on her. And she believes him. She thought, well, he's a high quality idol. I wouldn't even doubt something like this. So naturally, they become a couple of sorts. She said that they were sexually involved, but he told her that he didn't want to be in a relationship. This is 18 or under? It's implied that she was a little bit older. Oh, okay. But is she saying like the courtship happened when she was underage? Courtship as in going on these dates. Oh, okay. Which is really inappropriate. Even if they don't sleep together, that's really inappropriate. If this is true, like, what are you talking about? You're going to go to the movies with someone 10 years younger than you and have a flirtatious relationship? Illegal. Jail. And it's confusing, but he pulled this fuckboy card on her. He basically told her, I don't want a relationship, but he would still open up to her. Guys, if someone's doing this to you, run the other way. Where they're like, I don't want to be in a relationship. But then they also sit down and they're like, I'm just so broken. I have trust issues. I've just been hurt too many times. No, they're trying to pull you into their little honey trap. He wants to seem vulnerable and he wants to seem like I just have commitment issues because I'm a victim. He just wants to fuck around. That's the plain old truth. 
But in her eyes, she's like, I can fix him. The entertainment industry is just so dark. She felt like they were a couple. They were passionately in love with each other, but he was just too hurt and too famous to be involved in a relationship. And he straight up told her, I don't want to be involved with anybody else. I just don't think I can handle a real relationship. But she discovered later that he had friends like this, friends like this in every major city of China. This guy has like a fucking franchisee of girls is what she's saying. And she said that she found photos of him bringing home girls overnight, even soliciting sex work. She also claimed that she confronted him and he admitted to it all. And these were big, big issues. He just couldn't control himself. Again, a victim, she's saying. Like he's positioning himself as a victim to be like, I just have an addiction. This is even before they got married. So Jinglei thought, okay, that's fine, but it's not going to be with me. She suggested that they stop seeing each other, but she claims Wong would call her for just every day, for weeks at a time, trying to convince her that this would never happen again and she's the one for him and they need to be together and that this is what he needs. So she's convinced. They get married. And this is after she graduates from Columbia. So she's now of age when they get married, like 2013. And Jinglei said that during the whole marriage, she felt used, abused, and disrespected as a wife. She felt like she was nothing more than some sort of breeding machine. She never got financial, emotional, or mental support from her husband. This was not a marriage. She felt like she was in The Handmaid's Tale. Wait, so they got married in 2013. Was that public at that point? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Oh. oh, so immediately it was public. Mm -hmm. I think I remember the marriage news. Mm -hmm. Everyone was praising him for marrying someone that's Smart. not a celebrity, yeah. so low-key, outside of the industry. People was like, oh, that's what a real man is. Mm -hmm. Like, you find your true love, and you just get married instead of making this into, like, a whole celebrity thing. Like, world's most expensive wedding vibes, right. yeah. Like, he's so he's marrying someone so smart. He's so smart. They're just such couple goals. I think that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Joke's on us. <laughs> so, she said it wasn't really a marriage. She felt like an employee. It's a handmaid's tale situation. She did everything for free while still being looked down upon by the whole family. She writes, writing this letter is the most difficult decision I've ever made. Life just feels so challenging. I believe that only by bravely facing the truth and starting anew can we have a new chance at life. She's very articulate. She's very eloquent, good with her words, but not overly dramatic where she's like, I am the biggest sufferer of all. She's very in tune with what she's saying. And she writes about how she's coming forward with this so that the truth can set her free and she can set an example for her two daughters that this is not what marriage is like. So she said, marriage is not supposed to be you doing everything for the whole family. When she had her first daughter, she thought, okay, he's just busy with his schedule, but this is our dream. He had always said that he wants a lot of kids and he wants a big family. And I'm going to have to put in more work to maintain the family right now, but that's because he's working so hard. She's not naive. She said, marriage is hard, but together we can get through anything. She said she was wrong. She gave birth three times during their marriage and to break it down, she was married to him for 60 months. She was actively pregnant for 27 of those 60 months. So like half the time. She was breastfeeding for another 18 months total and assuming it takes her two months to prepare for each pregnancy out of the 60 months together, almost all of it, Jing Lei was either preparing for pregnancy, pregnant, or dealing with postpartum. I would die. Honestly, I would die. Like seeing my sister go through it pretty back to back, I would die. And originally she convinced herself again, this is going to be okay. This is what it takes to build a family. It's not like he can have the kid, right? She said, when entering the marriage, I thought we would be a family for a lifetime. So wholeheartedly, I devoted everything I had to this because you're 10 years older than me and wanted many children. I gave up my job. I gave up my personal life and I centered everything around you and the children. Throughout most of our marriage, I was either prepping for pregnancy, pregnant, or afterwards, and I faced all of these physical, emotional, mental challenges on my own. And she's like giving disclaimers, like, of course, the kids are the best thing that ever happened to me, and I would never say that I regret it, but had I known that you would just leave me to be in this journey all by myself and leave me to raise the kids by myself, do everything by myself, I think I would have thought a little bit harder before going into it. And I'm sure that she worked her whole life to get into a school like Columbia, and now she's essentially being treated like a breeder. She also had to rely on Wong financially, and she had no savings of her own because she just graduated Columbia when they got married. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have time to kickstart that career. Yeah. And when you graduate from a prestigious university like that, yeah, you can take a gap year or two, but 
any industry, any school, the more you take time off of work, it's hard to go back. She's saying she gave up the possibility of her career, her degree, everything for this family, believing it was true love. She took on the role of nanny, teacher, housekeeper, driver, manager, personal assistant, companion, and he didn't even show her appreciation. Then there was mistreatment by the family. She said even Wong's family wasn't there for her. They treated her like she was some outsider, conniving little fox that was trying to drain them of their money and prestige. She said, after marrying you for so many years, I've endured continuous suspicion, insults, emotional abuse from you and your family. From the beginning, I was forced to sign an unequal prenuptial agreement, and I understand and fully accept that you wanted to protect your premarital assets. However, our postmarital assets are the result of our joint efforts and the responsibility we've each fulfilled. The house is in your name. The car is in your mom's name. And property transfers are done so meticulously as if you are scared that I'm going to try and gain some advantage here. And maybe all of that would have been fine had he not been cheating on her the whole time, she claims. She claimed that it was just so blatant and disrespectful. Apparently for his birthday, he would receive full nude photos from his mistresses wishing him a happy birthday who all know well and damn that he's married with kids. Like this guy, all he posted on Weibo and shit, other than his career, were his kids and his wife. So like they freaking know. And he would thank them flirtatiously, she claimed. He wasn't even like blocked, disgusting. I'm going to expose you for being a homer. He's like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like that's a really cool picture. (sighs) There was another incident, she alleges, that one of the mistresses was going to his concert. So he didn't want her to be at one of his home concerts. The mistress even posted a picture of him at the concert on her Instagram and called him a cute nickname of Hong Hong. Hong Hong. And then she deleted it. So Jing Lei, the wife, also alleges that during COVID time, he refused to let her have family and friends over for Christmas because it breaks regulations and that could be a whole scandal. But he would still go to his mistress's houses during the Christmas Ah. break and go to their holiday parties. She said that she constantly received the hey girl messages. Do you know what a hey girl message is? No. It's a thing. If there's a girl who ends up sleeping with a guy or dating a guy and then finds out that he has a girlfriend, they always start the message with, hey girl, I know you don't know me and I just want to let you know I never knew that you guys were dating, but like I've been f***ing this guy (laughs) and that's your boyfriend. (laughs) It always starts with like, hey girl. So other girls are messaging her. Wife. Yeah, to be like, you know. Hey girl, I didn't know Wang Li Hong's married. Yeah, these girls are shady though. You <sighs> know what I mean? Like this is really for, hey girl, I genuinely didn't know that he was dating you. But like, I just thought you should know. I've cut off contact and like you should probably too because he's cheating on you. What? Yeah, but she was getting hey girl messages. Hey girl, so I thought that you guys were separated and only keeping up for social appearances. But I'm like fucking your husband. What? Yeah, one particularly hurtful message she claimed was from his personal dance teacher. And it was around the time that Jing Lei was due to give birth. And this next part is so unhinged. But she claims that she found videos of sex workers in his phone. And they all resembled employees that he had. So imagine he's hiring sex workers that look like his assistant. Sex workers that look like his housekeeper. Oh, that is like next level terrifying sickness in the Is that better? Okay, so he's sleeping with the employee versus he's hiring someone who looks just like the employee. What's worse? (laughs) <laughs> I think I'd rather you just sleep with the employee. What? Yeah. Really? This is like mentally so twisted. Guys sleeping with their employees. I feel like I've seen it. I've heard it. But when you're like, no, babe, it's because I didn't want to get in trouble with the work regulations. So I fucked a sex worker instead. It's like you are thinking about this employee so much that you are going out to hire sex workers that I would be so... Like, mm. the mental cartwheels is so... Okay, I see. I so see what sick. you mean. Yeah, you're going above and beyond. Yeah, now you got me in a rabbit hole. Now I'm uh. like, okay, what's worse? Your husband hiring a sex worker and sleeping with them? Or your husband hiring a sex worker that looks like you when you were younger? <laughs> Stab me in the heart! I would never recover emotionally. I would light this house on fire. Oh my goodness. The amount of emotional trauma... Yeah. Anyway, she wrote, how could I endure this? Despite experiencing various situations like this, I still chose to forgive you, accompany you, but in a different way without expecting you to change. So she kind of insinuated that she was tired, but she hoped that this was a phase that he was going through, a midlife crisis, if you will. She said, I let you live the way that you wanted. I withdrew from your life. I stayed at home with the kids and I was just waiting for you to come back. 
I think she's trying to say there's nothing I could have said. Like she could have yelled at him, forced him. And like, he's not going to change by that. She's just hoping their love is strong enough that he's going to choose to wake up from this and be like, what am I doing? And then come back. But he was selfish and decided he wanted a divorce because he was like, you know what? I want to be more open with my cheating. Like, I just want to really like get laid. She also claimed that he would verbally abuse her, insult her, make up crazy lies about her to isolate her from her own friends and family. She said, I've given you everything you wanted, even though you've been irresponsible and absurd. I haven't said much to friends and family about it. I'm always meeting everyone with a smile, being gentle and firm and guarding our family. She said at the end of the day, she always did what was best for him and the kids and their family unit, but he never did that for her. And he's not even a freaking good dad, she said. She alleged that he misses the kids' birthdays. He, like, forgets. Have you guys seen that, Jimmy Kimmel? What are your daughter's birthdays? Oh, why do you do this to me? I give up. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, yesterday. That About makes their kids. Me so mad. The little kid is like, Dad, yesterday was my birthday. <laughs> Childhood trauma. She'll never recover from that. What's up with that? Seriously, what's up with that? I don't know, but you're pretty good at dates. Don't test me. Let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) She said, every time you leave for months, I watch the children cry heartbreakingly in my arms and my heart breaks. I realize that my continuance tolerance only set a bad example for our daughters. Anything you care about, you do make time for. As our therapist said, those who are absent will always find excuses. Love and care is through actions, not just words. You said you love me before, and now you say you love the children. I've heard all of it, but I've seen none of it. Love and care are in actions. And the last section is really the whole reason she's been exposing all of this. She said that she and Wong have discussed going public with the divorce and Jing Lei said that she was really scared. She's not a beloved celebrity. He's like one of the most beloved celebrities of all time. So obviously she's nervous. They're going to think that she's a gold digger, that she's cheating, that she's a bad mom. Like people come up with crazy assumptions just because they love one party. They know nothing about the second party. But if one party is good and they're divorcing, the other party must be bad. That's the assumption. And when she tells wong about this he's like reassuring her she says what's chilling is in the end you said that i should trust you that you would speak up and protect the mother of your children and protect us as a family even though we're getting a divorce but your team was fully prepared for marketing and controlling the public opinion she is insinuating that they leaked the conversation about her having problems with the mother-in-law because it took away all the attention from wong Damn, like these celebrity divorce, it's like a literal war on PR and companies and brands and all of that. Yeah, like she's basically saying, you're Joe Jonas. That's what she's saying right now. And like, who knows if Joe Jonas even did that? But it's like everything kind of leads to like that assumption of like, that was very convenient, you know? Like, I guess that's how netizens feel. And she's kind of drawing these connections for netizens. And they're like, yeah, that is weird. Where did we get this random idea that it was a problem between her and the mother-in-law? She's saying that he used his connections to make it all about that and then never clarified anything. Jing Lei continued, you were the only one in the wrong, yet your mother and I bore the brunt of all the criticism and negative news while you remained unscathed. Side note, Jing Lei does go on to allege that Wong is an insufferable mama's boy (laughs) and that he would do anything to make his mom happy, but he also wanted to be super independent like most mama's boys. So his mom would be like, hey, Wong, you do this. And then he would be like, well, I can't say no to my mommy, so I'm going to make my wife say no to my mommy. And then the wife would have to be like, okay, I'm going to put my foot down for you because you have, I don't know, no balls, no testicles. So no mother-in-law, he's not going to do that and stop telling him what to do and made her the villain in the whole family. And then he would turn around and be like, mommy, I don't know why she said that. Mommy, I love you. You know that, right? That's what she's claiming. I don't know. I think there is a dark space in my heart for mama's boys for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And she said, when I asked you to clarify the news that... I wasn't having troubles with your mother-in-law. I mean, I was, but that's not the main reason for the divorce. You said it wasn't convenient for you to respond. And then the tabloids came out about how you're cheating and you and your agency immediately respond. (laughs) So I don't know. It just seems like there is no us. There is no family. It's only you, 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 and that's it. You claim your reputation is precious, but have you ever thought about a woman's reputation being precious? I still have a long life ahead of me. I always protected you and never spoke ill of you, even to family and close friends, but you don't even hesitate for a minute to spread rumors and try and destroy me. And she said, I'm not going to bear the cross for you anymore. 
She also clarified that she's not doing this for money. She said she's more than competent of raising her children on her own with no money, but she does believe financial compensation is rightfully hers. So her whole message is giving very strong feminism. And I think a lot of people were behind it. And this is so fucked up. I don't think a lot of netizens would have been as behind it had she not graduated from a place like Columbia. I think because she already proved to netizens in the own society's sick and twisted way that she's a competent woman. Now anything she says doesn't feel gold diggery. So she's saying, yeah, I can go make my own money. I'm literally well-educated, but I think that I deserve financial compensation because that's what a marriage is when you get a divorce. Like that's just what it is. So yeah, that's my right. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, makes sense. Which makes sense, but I'm just saying, I don't know if it would have gone over well had she not been a Columbia grad and people not had this image of her already. And I think that's fucked up. I'm just pointing it out. We should have this approach with everybody, but you get it. She said, you said that you hoped that I wouldn't ruin your entertainment career, but I think like this is your own doing. These are your actions. And she said, I just hope that my kids learn from this, that when you come to the end of the rope, you tie a knot, and you just hang on. Basically saying, I'm going to get through this for me and my kids. And I'm going to be the lesson. When Jing Lei's post starts going viral. I mean, it's pretty immediate. This is explosive news. Imagine Jay-Z posts a six, six page expose. We'd be like, ah! we'd be freaking out. Netizens were heartbroken. There were thousands, if not millions of comments. And they all sounded similar. It all read, I have been your fan since childhood, but I never knew you were such trash. I'm so disappointed that I ever supported someone like you. I'm, I'm going to be burning, burning my merch. I'm going to burn your CD. I'm going to take, take you off my Spotify, Spotify favorites, favorites list. list. They once praised Wong for having such great family and focused on academics, but now they just felt so gross about not just Wong, but Wong's whole family. It's giving like, nobody's good enough for my son. Everyone's a gold digger. Like those moms who are like, Ugh, my daughter-in-law can't cook well. She's just here for money. It's just sick. So everyone's like, Wong is sick. No wonder because he's raised by a family like this. And everything in Jing Lei's letter felt so specific. They're like, there's no way she's lying about this. And on top of that, you know, Wong, his estimated net worth is about 100 million. It could be a lot more, honestly. I would not be surprised if it's a lot more. So let's just guesstimate hundreds of millions of dollars. If she's lying about something like this with no savings, I mean, just think about that. Think about her ruining her life. Do you know how scary that is? And she's a smart woman. So people are like, okay, this is really nuts. And she also doesn't have a track record of stirring up drama or trying to get attention. She's always kind of been like the wife in the background, like the mother of his children. She's not out here trying to make a career for herself in the entertainment industry. So you know how everyone was a bit more skeptical in the beginning? Not anymore. Everyone is like diehard team Jing Lei. And if you weren't, you were just as bad as Wong. People said even Jay Chow unfollowed him. He did. This letter comes out. Jay Chow unfollows him within the next 24 hours. And people took this as a sign of like, oh my God, Jing Lei is telling the truth because Jay Chow is so deep in the industry. So he must have known that these things were happening or there must be some truth to it that he must have seen or like he's connecting the dots in his head of like, oh, that's why these actions, you know, there must be a reason that he unfollowed him. But there's actually a more sinister rumor. It's not because of Jing Lei. Apparently, it was reported by hotel employees that Wang would go to these hotels to sleep with sex workers and he would book the room under the name Mr. Chow. And he would have the girls asking, oh, I'm here to see Mr. Chow. So if paparazzi ever talked to the hotel staff, they would report it's an A-list celebrity by the name of Mr. Chow. Guess who is like the most recognizable one? Jay Chow. So the huge scandal would not go to Wang, but it would go to Jay freaking Chow. It's unclear if this is true or hotel staff made it up or if they even said that to begin with. But if it is true, that'd be insane. That would be insane. Who knows why Jay Chow unfollowed Wong or if maybe his social media team did and he didn't even know. We don't know the intention behind it, but it added fuel to the fire. There's even a fan page for Jay Chow that posted a Jay Chow song called What Kind of Man, which was a song about being a good man. And the caption read, Jay Chow will never disappoint us. Poking fun at Wong. Wong blocked the fan account. It was just like kind of petty. In, like, in such a serious situation, it just felt like such a petty move that it just drew more attention. People are like, oh my God, did you hear? He blocked the fan account. It's just crazy. A lot of Jay Chow fans that didn't love Wong were even jumping in, like throwing punches left and right. And because most of the girls in Jing Lei's post are unnamed, except for Yumi from BY2, she becomes a focal point in the social media discourse. Wong and Jing Lei's marriage 
was super public. So it's assumed that if everything stated in that expose was true, Yumi was a knowing mistress. Yumi's agency was the first to react after Jingli's accusations came out. They said that they would take legal action against anyone that was making up lies. Then at 4 a.m. that night, Yumi herself posted a statement and it was kind of, it was kind of cocky. <laughs> I will give her that. She said, um, talks can be frightening. Rumors spread like wildfire. Words can kill. Apologies for troubling police last night. And thank you for your hard work. Basically saying, I filed a police report against defamatory statements and rumors are toxic. It was not the energy a lot of netizens were expecting. Even if the allegations were false, a lot of people wanted her to kind of treat it a little more seriously. Like, hey guys, I just want to clarify something that wasn't me. Here's what actually happened. Here's my side of things. Like, I would never knowingly go after someone who's married. Yeah, anyway, bye. But instead, she was like, words can kill. Thanks, police, for the hard work. Mm. It was just, uh, it definitely made it not good. Mm. It was not a good look on Yumi. She kind of shot her own foot, insinuating that Jinglei was lying. And the way that she was writing is and cocky is often associated with the worst type of mistresses. You know what I mean? Mm. So th it was just, yeah, all around really bad. So of course, Jingle responds to Yumi and says, please provide me with the contact information for the police department that you went to. I will provide the evidence. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and <sighs> hers is like very to the point, oh. very professional, very eloquent. So of course, a lot of people liked Jingle a lot more than Yumi and they're like, Yumi is the nasty, disgusting, hoey mistress. And add to the fact that Jay Chow unfollowed Wang, this is all happening in 24 hours. So people are like, die hard Jingle. Like, you cannot tell them otherwise. Then the next day at around 8 p.m., Yumi posted another response. This time it was a bit more lengthy and she said that she didn't want to disclose which police station she went to as it felt inappropriate to get them publicly involved in something so big and drastic. But besides that, she said in her post, she never tried to break up any marriages. She stated that the couple's marriage issues started way back in 2019 and they'd been separated for the past three years. And not even that, there was a picture of Wang and Yumi going viral. I'm gonna put it right here. It's Yumi and her boobies are boobying for sure. Yeah, and they're kind of like on his arm. If I saw my husband, if that was you, yeah, you better sleep with both eyes open. You better not sleep because you're dead. Her boobs are on his arm. Like if a girl is like taking a picture with you like that and you let them, I'd be like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why? Netizens didn't like it. It felt very sexual and intimate. She said that picture was back from 2012 before the couple even got married. Because remember, Jinglei and Wang got married in 2013. Mm -hmm. So she's saying, I was never his mistress. And the reason that people are saying I was his mistress is because I posted that picture in 2015 when they were already married. But it was from 2012. I posted the picture in 2015 because I was dating someone and I wanted to make him jealous. <laughs> what it was really weird i mean half the people either believe that half the people don't believe it overall even if that's the truth it's a little weird even if that's the what truth it's just kind of like behavior why did you do that it's like what like why are you saying that so proudly right now that's not normal behavior yeah. it's just kind of toxic either way and so she said no that's from 2012 and back in 2012 i was actually dating wong so i wasn't just like a little ho. mind you i'm his ex-girlfriend she said that jingle already knew about their past as boyfriend and girlfriend and is now making it seem like she just discovered that yumi is a mistress later on she also shared old <laughs> chat logs between her and wong from wechat and if you look at the dates their last messages are from around 2013 before the marriage so I guess you could argue that maybe Wong was kind of seeing both of them. Her story kind of checks out, which side note, why is every single person on this planet, including myself, so cringe when they flirt? You cannot convince me that we don't get secondhand embarrassment from people flirting. Wong texted Yumi in these text messages. Good night, sexy sweets, XOXOXO. <laughs> and everyone's like, what's going on, Gossip Girl? What's going on? And then in the morning, he would text, good morning, yummy sexy. <laughs> 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 Bro, I would have the ick first thing in the morning if you called me yummy sexy. What? what? Yummy sexy? Ah! Less than an hour later, Jingle comes with receipts. She posted a response and said, you guys stopped talking on WeChat in 2013. That is the truth because you switched over to WhatsApp. 
Oh, oh. Where your profile picture is a nude photo. Oh. Jinglei also showed receipts of her soon-to-be ex-husband's chat logs with Yumi that were way after 2013, insinuating that she doesn't think that they ever dated because Wong texted Yumi saying, I met someone lately and started dating. Thought I should let you know. And Jinglei is saying, you're trying to act like you guys were boyfriend and girlfriend and make it seem like I was the next girlfriend who's just crazy now. And you're like the crazy ex-girlfriend in my head and I'm jealous of you. Actually, you guys never even dated because if you were in a relationship with Wong, you think he would just send you a text? Like that's how people break up? Oh, thought you should know I'm seeing someone else. No, that sounds like you guys are just friends with f***ing benefits. And that someone else is me. Jingli added that she was already with Wong for the majority of 2013. And by that point, they were already talking about getting married. So all of this is moot. And the social media back and forth between the two women was super intense. I will say public sentiment leaned heavily with Jingli. They just found her more credible. And I think what really happened is Jingli fit the perfect wife stereotype really well. And Yumi fit the mean mistress stereotype really well. And I'm not saying that's who she is as a person, but the way that they were presenting themselves in this fight, it was almost textbook. And people just had a really strong aversion to Yumi. BY2, the idol group, had a rough few months because of this. Yumi actually has a twin sister who's also in the idol group. And people flooded their social media with comments. Which one of you does Wong like again? And you're like, how is there so much time left in this freaking video? Because the next, no, that day at 1 a.m., Wong's father posts a handwritten letter which side note he's holding up his handwritten letter it's giving hostage but i guess it's supposed to prove that like he wrote the letter and nobody else wrote it but it's it's really crazy he covered a few points in his letter he said the whole marriage was bad from the get-go he claimed it's not a love story he said that jingle was the evil one in all of this and everyone in the family could see it coming which is why he didn't want his son to marry her he claimed jingle was casually dating wong when she fell pregnant initially she was like no wong I'm going to raise the baby by myself. I don't need you. Like I'm an independent woman that graduated from Columbia. I got this. But then immediately she turned around and was like, actually, you know what? On second thought, if you don't marry me and raise this child with me, I will ruin your fucking career. Wow. Wong never meant to get her pregnant, but he thought maybe it's a blessing in disguise as he wanted kids sooner or later. He felt the urge to marry her is what the dad is saying to do the right thing. Be a man. Wong's entire family was against it. But Wong was like, you know what? I set my mind to this. This is what I'm going to do. So they realized he's not backing down. And the least that they could do was just hope that Jing Lei would change after getting married. She would be a good mom, a good wife. But they said that wasn't the case. Wong allegedly suffered through seven years of absolute freaking terror and hell, just constantly trying to please and maintain his marriage because she was constantly threatening to ruin his life, ruin his career. And it was like he was walking on eggshells. They weren't emotionally, mentally connecting. Like it was just bad. All he did was try to focus on the kids. Meanwhile, Jinglei was constantly asking for more money, more money. She wanted properties in her name. She wanted allowances, two nannies, a live-in maid, a personal driver. Like she just wanted that good, good life. He stated that the two had been separated since 2019 and Jinglei has been demanding $30 million of compensation from the Wong family. Wong's dad stated that letting the two of them get married was the biggest mistake of his life. Dang. Wow. But even with Wong's dad's statement, I think it was just too late. The damage was done. Infinity, Chow Tai Fook, and other brands started terminating their brand ambassadorships with Wong. There was one brand called Wahaha. 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 It's a large Chinese company. The biggest. Yeah, they make billions of dollars a year in revenue. And the chairman is one of the richest men in China. But back when Wahaha was just getting started at the time, they were not big. They were like trying to sell bottled water, like purified water. And they're like, we need a celebrity to endorse our bottled water for it to be big. And this is back when Wang was also small. So the company is small. Wang is small. They're like, okay, let's do like a small brand partnership with you and you can be the brand ambassador. So this is not like they're pouring millions of dollars and signing this huge celebrity. It's just like a small deal. Wang takes it. He took a chance on them. He signs to work with them. And then his career skyrockets. Wang's career skyrockets before the company skyrockets. And he never, he never terminated the contract to be their brand ambassador. He never raised the price. Now, I don't know. I have a suspicion that he got some shares. That is my suspicion. But that is alleged. That's a personal opinion, not a fact. But anyway, it's like one of those cute little humbling stories people always say about Wong. Like he never raised his cause. But like that doesn't make sense to me about how cute it is because Wahaha became one of the biggest companies. So it's like, why are you doing charity work for 
of the, one of the biggest corporations like yeah, go do yeah. charity work for a smaller business then you yeah. know but like people kind of frame it as like oh my god he's such a good person right now in 2018 so a year before their divorce conversation happened the chairman stepped down and his daughter took over she cut ties with Wong she said, I don't care that he's not raising his price. Like, I'm not going to work with him. He's no longer the brand ambassador. And people are like, why? She said, first of all, he's getting old. I think people are tired of his looks. And second of all, I just don't personally like him. What? And she got so much backlash for that. And now three years later, people are bringing up this incident now that all the other brands are canceling their contracts with Wong. And they're saying, oh my God, did she know something three years ago that we didn't know? So Wong finally responds to try and put a stop to all of this because it's snowballing so quickly. And again, his statement is very PR and it was for sure not a six page expose. He apologized once more for failing his marriage and even tried transferring property to Jing Lei's name. He's like, this is what I'm going to do to make it right. He did not admit to any of the other allegations such as the cheating, the nude photos, all of that. But he wrote, reflecting on it, a man should still bear responsibilities. I am no longer making any explanations or defenses, failing to manage the marriage well, causing trouble for the family and not maintaining the ideal image for an idol for the public are all of my faults. So I sincerely apologize to my parents parents and children. And since the divorce has already happened, arguing about the past is meaningless. From now on, I'm going to pay attention to my words and actions, take on the responsibilities of a father, son, public figure, and economically and personally take care of Jing Lei and the children for, I mean, as much as I can. He also mentioned that he would be taking a step back from work to focus on his family. Honestly, not a bad response. At the time, it was a bad response. In hindsight, it's not a bad response. So at the time, people were pissed at the time people were pissed because it's like you're not talking about the problem yeah you're like uh this is in the past mm. let's move on and i'm gonna do better from now on he doesn't address what her pain points are like she's saying this is how i was so hurt and then he's like anyway i'm gonna work hard to be a good dad it's like what are you saying sir so then jing Lei, she posts a response and suggests that wang's dad was instructed to write all of those lies in the letter and in her rebuttal she asked if she made Wang marry her because she was pregnant and he was forced to and he was scared, why did he stay in the marriage for as long as he did? And why did he have a second and third child then? She stated, as for the money requested after the divorce, the $30 million, first of all, that's nothing. And all of that is going to the kids not having a shift in their standard of living after the divorce, which is not an unusual thing. Usually it is granted by a ton of divorce courts when you're talking about this level of money. Also, concerning Wang Li Hong's alleged dedication to his children and family, Jing Lei said it's untrue. He at most spent five to 10 minutes on a video call before bedtime. Sometimes he wouldn't even do video calls. He often missed their birthdays. He often missed major holidays. Also, at one point in the handwritten letter, Wang's dad denied that Wang solicited sex workers, but Jing Lei's response to that was, yeah, well, usually sons don't go bragging to their dads about something like that. And with this response, Jing Lei posted a picture that looked like Wang's manager or someone on Wang's team messaging her, asking her to come out and say that everything was fake and lies. They wrote, we'll give you the condo if you tell the media today that your accusations were groundless. You've just been too upset. You haven't been feeling well, so you're not thinking clearly. Wang is not guilty of all those things and you apologize. In the final ending of her response, Jing Lei wanted proof from Wang's father of what he was saying, that she forced him into marriage via pregnancy or else she will sue him for defamation. And people were on Jing Lei's side. Her post was very well written. She's good with her words. And Wang and his whole family just seemed a little bit more unhinged and emotional, honestly. It kind of gave like grasping at straws mm -hmm. type of energy. But then Wang personally responds to Jing Lei. A few things to note about his response is he uses a nickname that Jing Lei used to go by. So to give you context, Jing Lei is half Japanese, half Taiwanese. He kept referring to her by her Japanese nickname in the letter, which seems innocent, but it could potentially possibly exploit anti-Japanese sentiments amongst Chinese netizens, which also exist amongst Korean netizens, like the older generations, of course, you know. It just seems like... Why are you doing that? Yeah, it's like you're doing that for a reason. Yeah, Come on. like distancing, distancing her from the people. Like, hey, yeah. she, you guys remember she's Japanese, right? Yeah, but you I, know? I'm with you guys. I'm full Taiwanese, and like, so are you. Like, yeah, she's half Japanese. That you know? is shady. It was so shady. And in the response, he addressed the underage accusations. He said, yes, we originally met in 2003 when you were 16, but we almost didn't like talk or interact for like 10 years before we got married until after you graduated. 
Wong said that his marriage to her was like living in fear every day for his life. He lived in threats of extortion and just fear constantly. He claimed that Jing Lei always used the children against him and once even resorted to physical violence and threats. He said when Jing Lei got pregnant, she turned to him and said verbatim, if you don't marry me today, I'll disappear, change my name, and you'll never see the baby for the rest of your life. Don't even think of looking for me because you'll never find me. He stated that he had a voice recording to back this up. So he married her for the sake of the kid and thought that they would get better, but nothing got better. They went to five separate couples counselors while married, but the issues never resolved. So they separated in 2019, entered into divorce ne- negotiation, where Jing Lei threatened to destroy his career if he didn't do what she wanted. He alleged that Jing Lei demanded $27 million from them and half of their Bel Air property, which is another $6 million of assets, half of his investment portfolio in stocks, as well as $30,000 a month in living expenses. So that's child support, alimony, you get that, as well as additional costs for nannies, drivers, a car, a 24-hour cleaning staff, and the right to live in his Taipei condo, which is another $14 million property in the most affluent area of Taipei. Wong said that he tried to settle for 20 million total, but she wasn't happy. So it seems like she's doing this because she's not happy with the amount of money she's getting. So he's drawing doubt on her intentions. Like she's not doing this because she's genuinely hurt. She's making up lies because she wants more money. He also states, you know, doing this publicly is only hurting the children. So I don't know why we're doing this right now. Like, can we please just talk in private? Like, why are we doing this? Jing Lei comes back swinging, okay? She asks Wang five very intense questions. She says, okay, just riddle me this bitch. Answer me this, you stupid hoe. Were you unfaithful during our marriage? I look forward to your response. She also reminded Wang that after they met in 2003, they went on multiple dates to the movies. They went out to dinner and she did go to his studio and his colleague's house at one point. This is when she's 16. And as for the property and money part, Jing Lei said that she did not ask for anything alimony she wanted half the property in la because it was under both their names she wanted half the money in their joint investment account not his personal stock portfolio that he had before they got married their joint account so she's saying don't make it seem like i'm trying to take half your money these are our joint assets so why wouldn't i take half of that why would i give it to you also the thirty thousand dollars a month you keep saying alimony That's child support. So again, what are you doing here? And I like itemize the cost of child support. So unless you want your kid to live a completely different life than what they're living now, this is the standard of living that they've been living in. So that's what I'm trying to give them. As for Wang's claim of living in fear, extortion, and threats, Jing Lei asserted that she is the victim of long-term psychological abuse and that Wang has a sex addiction, addiction and narcissistic personality disorder. She included a picture of what looks like an email. I don't know. And just to give you context, there's like no headers, no identifying text that makes me go, oh, this is an email from person A to person B. It's just very confusing. It's very vague. But Jing Lei alleges it's from a therapist that they both saw. And the therapist writes, Bobby, which is Wang's nickname, you're on the wrong track. You're in the blame pattern, not in the taking responsibility for your part in pushing Sasha Jing Lei away. Treating your wife as if she has a mental illness and describing her in this way to others has been part of the problem and the contribution on your part. You're taking this approach now is only pushing her further away. It's also been mentally abusive. And then Jing Lei writes, it clearly states that I am the one enduring long-term mental abuse, humiliation, and gaslighting from you and not the other way around. Additionally, the psychologist suggests that you have issues with sex addiction and narcissistic personality disorder. And she also mentions your tendency to spread rumors about me. The psychologist told me and notes that you will continue seeking new therapists until you find one that can be persuaded to believe that I am crazy. Because why else would they go to five different counselors? It's like you're looking for the one that's going to agree with you. And you're not stopping till you find it. She also states that if he does have any recordings, it is illegal and potentially defamatory. So like, fuck around and find out, she said. Honestly, this feels like a very intense game of tennis where my head is just like back and forth between the two sides from response to response. And I was like, okay, we'll just wait till Wang's response, right? But no, Jing Lei posts again later that day. She asks if Wang hired sex workers before they got married, asks about Wang's involvement with Yumi, accused Wang and his family of treating her like a baby breeding machine and then forcing a divorce after she gave them a son because the first two were daughters and then almost immediately after the son, they were like, okay, divorce now. 
She criticized Wang for neglecting his family by missing the kids' birthdays and holidays and questioned why he can only communicate through Weibo and not answer her calls. So basically, she's saying, you want to do this in private, but you're rejecting all my calls. She also stated that the use of her Japanese nickname was a reflection of how low his character will go and his upbringing. She said that she used that name when she was very, very young and has no connections with Japan, the country. She's just half Japanese, but she was born and raised in the U.S. So go f*** yourself, she's saying. Everyone was on Jing Lei's side. They felt like Wang was just being gross and petty at this point. Like, it was just weird. It's just giving attitude. So not too long after, Wang releases a new statement, and he seems a bit more apologetic this time. So he went from being like, let me use your Japanese nickname, bitch, to I feel remorse. I declare full responsibility and I pledge not to provide any more explanations or defenses and I will temporarily withdraw from work to take care of my family. I promise to exchange the house into Jing Lei's name and we will dispute this. I will, I will give her like basically whatever she wants. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, Jing Lei and his children are his responsibility and he will take care of them. But just as you think things are coming to an end, Wong said that he's going to disappear. Things are going to get better, right? Three days later, Jing Lei posts another lengthy expose on Weibo. This was not any new information this time. It was just kind of a recap of everything that we've already talked about. And I think this is where people were like, huh? Like, why can't you move on, Jing Lei? We've moved on. It's been three days. In internet years, that's 10 years. There's new drama we got to keep up with. Come on, you got everything that you wanted. Why do we need a recap? Others were saying, it just feels weird. Like she just keeps wanting to talk about it. But some people argued, maybe it's a form of closure. Her closing statements, like in a trial, you know how you have closing statements? Maybe it's like that. But three weeks later of radio silence, she posts again. And she starts accusing Wang of bringing three strangers to her home to visit the children. She said Wang tried to enter the house using his key, even though she refused to let him in because he had three random strangers with him. And she said that if she's found dead, she never took her own life and she's scared for her safety. Then June 7th, 2023, Jing Lei posted that she received a letter from the U.S. where she and Wang were also married. And she claimed that she won the lawsuit in New York. She expressed gratitude and said that she burst into tears feeling the validation that her trauma was real. She even did a live stream where she interacted with netizens, thanking them for their support. But because the two can't catch a break, Wang's attorneys promptly posted a legal letter stating that Jing Lei did not win the divorce settlement in New York. This reignites a huge fight between the two this year. On July 5th, 2023, media officials reported that the divorce between the two judged in New York favored Wang instead of Jing Lei. In court, Wang's side provided 11 pieces of evidence while Jing who had previously accused her ex-husband of crazy things, infidelity, seeing pictures of him licking a woman's lips, casual relationships, she failed to produce any evidence to support her claims in court. There are also reports that Jing Lei showed contempt for court, refused to comply with the ruling, and denied Wang visitation rights to their children. This revelation caused a massive turnaround in public opinion. People who had previously been diehard Jing Lei are now questioning the authenticity of even her first expose letter. The court determined that Wang was faultless in the marriage, so there was no proof that he even cheated, is what they're saying, because if you cheat, you have fault in the marriage, like in the divorce. The court ruled their divorce and approved immediate mandatory enforcement. However, Jing Lei did not accept the ruling. She prevented Wang from visiting the children because she claimed that Wang did not pay her child support in time. The three children, the oldest one is nine, has also never been to school. What? Yeah. Oh, maybe this is when this is all going down, there were like six or seven. Yeah. So, mm. but a lot of netizens don't like that and they question her ability to mother mm. because as a mom, especially as a well-educated mom, you would think that maintaining a sense of normalcy and still giving your child the opportunity to go to school and learn and socialize would be the most important thing. So a lot of people feel like, is she just using her kids as pawns and she doesn't really care for them? I don't know. There's no reports that they're being homeschooled. I don't know. Maybe they are. We don't know, I guess. Please let me know if they are, because if they're not, that's really alarming. So with the conclusion of this case, majority of the netizens began criticizing Jing. Even Wang Sutong spoke out about the incident. Shut the front door. Oh, yeah. Our bestie is back. Our bestie. Hello, best friend. Okay. And he suggested that spending money to write a few essays online could bring down a whole person. 
He's basically saying like she didn't even write those exposés. That's the insinuation. He's saying she hired, she paid money for someone to write those essays. Yeah, and just like try to spin this crazy story and bring him down and win in the divorce. Wow. At this point, netizens are looking back at the entire case, and the public kind of does a 180. The celebrity from Kangxi Coming also clarified that he didn't write down Wang's name. It was actually um Luo Jixiang. Luo Jixiang. Who's also in a scandal, which we can cover later if you want, because the Chinaverse can't stop, won't stop. His whole thing was called Doren Ring Dong. It's called Multiple People Exercise. Oh, yes, yes, Multiple yeah. Multiple people exercise the and songs, yeah. the king of uh, time management. He is so busy. He does so many shows and movies and concerts and still finds time to, you know, exercise. So he was exercise like, wow. Exercise with a lot of women. Yeah, king of um, time management. Yeah, like, yeah. Very, yeah. So let me know. So right now, as far as where netizens stand, I would say that they're more in support of Wong now. And I'll get into the reasons. Or like, they're more neutral in the sense of like, I think both of them are messy is kind of the feeling that a lot of people have, but still more so Wong. A lot of people think that it was actually Jing Lei who posted or leaked to the tabloids about the affair with Yumi and the orgy video because that news broke the day after the divorce and it came right before her expose and it just swayed public opinion before she even came out with her expose. Many of Jing Lei's accusations kind of started falling apart, the court ruling, Everything just seemed suspicious and people started going with Wong. And people now looking back, they also really like Wong's responses to everything. They like the fact that he just repeatedly apologized. He kept trying to say, hey, yeah, I f***ed up. I'm trying to make it right. I'm going to put all my attention on being a good dad. It just felt like the right thing to do for kids. Like, if you were a parent, what would you do to be a better parent in that situation? Would you want the public to know, no, I'm right, and let's do this whole thing. Let's fight even more, and let me stand up for myself and the kids. We'll think about the kids later. Or is it better for him to, like, bite his tongue, hope for the court ruling, and just do the best for the kids, which is to just take ownership? So it just kind of felt like, wait, was he being the bigger person all along, and we just all shat on him? And I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm. Sh- I. It we, does I, seem. The feeling um, is like. Yes. We just don't know, though. Like we yes. really don't, don't know. know. Like divorce, it just sounds so messy. There's. Yeah. Relationship, kids. You know, it's just like it truly is like wow, this is messy. I mean, who's the winner here? We don't know. Like, did he win or did she win? We thought she won, but now look at this. Like, it did a 180 on her. Now she's being. Sh- Uh, So it's like, who really won out of this? So I think um, what a lot of netizens say about this situation is that we can hate Wong for his actions. So most netizens believe that Wong probably did have some sort of playboy incident during his marriage. He probably wasn't faithful the whole time and perfect. Like he even admitted he fucked up. But it seems like that's really all he did because she can't seem to provide proof for anything else. So people are saying... Wong's fault is in his action. He was probably a playboy, hurt his marriage. That's an action. Now, people are saying the reason that they, I'm not saying this is me. This is what netizens are saying, and they put it very eloquently. Netizens are saying the reason that they turned on Jing Lei is it seems like a problem in her character. It's like, whereas Wong made an action and he's apologized. Mm-hmm. But this is Jing Lei's character is to keep going on about it, saying she has proof, throwing out accusations and failing with the proof. And like, it seems more of a character issue versus one action or three actions. And to make matters worse, in the netizens opinions, she started a podcast where she is talking about the divorce. And people are just like, I don't know, like... <sighs> I don't know because I'm not a parent and I haven't been through a divorce. A lot of parents are saying... It's just not what a good parent does. Like, you know, when you have good parents in a divorce, they don't shit talk to the dad or the mom. They don't try to make it public. They try to present a united front. It's just not what good parents do. It's not what a parent does when they put their kids first. So a lot of people had problems with that. I personally don't think that either of them are truly innocent. It's just a matter of like, how guilty are they? Like, what are they guilty of? And I don't think we'll ever know. And I think it's just one of those things where I don't think either of them should be canceled or ripped apart. I think it's just a very unfortunate relationship. But I will say this part was kind of sad and I kind of almost cried. Um, Wang 
came back to his career recently, September 2023. He held a concert in Taipei and his tickets sold out. There were over 20,000 fans in the arena and he sang one of his signature songs, Kiss Goodbye. And after the song, he kneeled and bowed to all of his fans for still supporting him. And like, okay, that got me a little emotional because if it's true that he probably did mess up a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad to be canceled from. He's just probably not the best husband in that marriage. Maybe he'll change. Maybe he'll be a better husband one day. But if that's true and he bit his tongue for the sake of his children and got slaughtered online, like that level of these people know nothing about what really happened, but still holding, like, I think that's very admirable if that's true. And I think this moment was kind of this climax for him. Because he seems so emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, that was a pretty raw moment. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts? It's so messy. I think about this like every single week. (sighs) I need therapy. (laughs) I need to see what counselors they're seeing. I need to talk to them. I'm like, I need help. I keep thinking about this. (laughs) What are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments and make sure to check out Case Defy. Link to the description. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.